Good evening and welcome. When we pursue breakthrough innovation, many of us look at service deficiencies and other things that directly reported by customers, which is tip of the iceberg. And if we fix them, we only get continuous innovation. What we need to be pursuing is bottom of the iceberg performance under supply. For example, have you ever met a popular doctor for consultation without having to wait? Now, I have spoken to many hospital administrators and doctors and they point out that it's hard for them to predict because we don't know when a consultation would end. Basically, the entire system has accepted this as a feature of the whole hospital uh, system. So, it clearly an opportunity for a breakthrough innovation if someone can come up with it. Now, last time's puzzle, a lot of you pointed out that it's hard to read business books and in fact, the Japanese have a word for it called sundoku. The pile of books that you have unread. I looked at reviews, the book sum summaries produced by various companies, the book booktuber community that discusses books on YouTube. Almost nobody covers a book's concepts through personal experiences, which is what I decided to do, and that is the pivot. And I also set myself a constraint of doing this whole thing in three minutes, making it the extreme pivot. That's also something that all of you pointed out. So basically, the value hypothesis has been proven through the T for the TMT series based on the feedback you've given. The main purpose of the MVP is to determine whether there is a product market fit. I decided to call it performance under supply problem and your extreme pivot. Are they really fitting? If you have done that, then your MVP is good. The next step would be to scale it. And the best example I have seen of this is Facebook. Originally, when they were in the colleges, they, you could poke people, super poke people, or throw sheep at people. Now, that doesn't make any sense to mainstream audience. Of course, Mark Zuckerberg smartly repurposed the activity stream from Twitter into the news feed, and the rest is history. Now, what I found is many of us innovators get seduced by the value hypothesis and never quite figure out how to scale it or the growth hypothesis. For me to avoid that, I want to see your answers on how, what growth hypothesis I could execute for this TMT series and the winner will win an attractive price. And the last week's puzzles winners are Minox, KK and Deepthi and I will be shipping them a copy of the Lean Startup Method for the best answers. Now I want to give you a quick summary of the last four episodes. We covered performance over supply and disruption by Clayton Christensen and showed how it is very rare, this phenomenon. Lean Startup by Eric Ries is a great method for breakthrough innovation, but the risk that it runs is you could be working on a low quality innovation. So we advocate this method of finding the bottom of the iceberg performance under supply and executing an extreme pivot on it. It has the best of both worlds because it has low funding requirement as well as gets you a breakthrough innovation. With that, I thank you all for listening to me to the coverage of Lean Startup Part 3.